Hi, everyone. My name is Christina Collins. I'm a PhD candidate at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm reporting on the work this year of the WWV and WWVH Scientific Modulation Working Group. This is a joint effort between uh, HAMSI and the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Uh, our objective is to develop recommendations for additions to WWV and WWVH's modulation that can be used for scientific purpose, particularly through the Personal Space Weather Station and other citizen science campaigns. I'm the point of contact for the working group. My email is down here in the right-hand corner of these slides. It also includes representatives from NIST leadership in time and frequency, staff of both stations, representatives of the geospace science community, uh, members of the GRAPE team, and uh, of the WWV Amateur Radio Club, who will be working on PR. Current list of the membership is found at the uh, DOI link for the characterization signal that I'll be playing for you in a few minutes here. The membership of the working group is expected to evolve as our tasks evolve. We will be moving back and forth between science and engineering as time goes on. The way that this project came about uh, was with what I like to call the UNO reverse card. In February of this past year, uh, David Kasdan, 88Y, invited Mike Lombardi, K0WWX, who is the point of contact for both stations through NIST, uh, to give a talk at the ham sign meeting. And uh, Mike wrote him back and said, well, how about you give us a talk? Um, and this was where he first suggested this idea of adding modulation to WWV to make it more useful for the work that we've been doing. Um, so in March, Phil Erickson and Steve Serwin gave an excellent seminar at NIST um, to the time and frequency division on the work we've been doing with WWV with kind of an emphasis on uh, time of flight measurement. And they motivated this discussion of um, what could be done to increase the uh, station's utility for, um, for scientific use. But it was very clear at this point that a longer period of discussion was going to be needed. So we convened our first working group meeting in May. Phil laid out some design principles, which I'll show here in a moment. And we figured out what the station's license privileges were to make sure that we were in compliance with those. In early June, the station engineers suggested that we begin by adding a, uh, a test chirp to one of the reserved minutes in the schedule of each station. And when we met in late June, we decided to use that as a, uh, an opportunity to characterize the signal chains of the two stations. Between June and August, I led the development of this characterization signal in a long email chain, and we finalized it at our most recent meeting. So it should be going on the air relatively soon. Here's my uh, paraphrasing of Phil's design principles. I like to revisit these at the beginning of each of our meetings to keep them front and center. Uh, sort of of primary importance is the notion of primum non nocere, first do no harm. We want to avoid disturbing existing use cases, existing customers to NIST time and frequency. Um, and it's also important in the course of this to preserve listening comfort. So for one thing, we don't want to have banks of receivers that are usable suddenly become unusable. And we also don't want to turn WWV from something that people like listening to into something that people don't like listening to as much. It might be more scientifically useful to replace it with pseudo random white noise, but that's not what we love it for. And it wouldn't be pleasant on the ear. So as we are considering the, um, things that we come up with, the different ideas, anything that's proposed must first pass that test of whether it's something that would disrupt listener comfort or uh, disrupt any known instrumentation that's already using some characteristic of the signals that would be disturbed. 
our goal is uh, to do something useful for science, but if possible, we want to also do something useful for WWV's existing customer base, something that improves the, uh, the resolution of time data that's received and potentially position data that is uh, inferred from it. And as we are considering the science questions, it's very important to focus on what we can do that augments existing infrastructure rather than imitates it. And in particular, what questions we can attack uh, to do something more than what we already have in existing instrumentation networks today. A couple of words on just how open this design space is. Uh, our goal is to sort of have a science question, some specific thing that we want to determine about the ionosphere, the geospace environment, determine what observation variables need to be figured out, design a modulation around them, prototype it either on the ham bands or in these test minutes, uh, figure out how that could be implemented as part of the existing infrastructure of the stations, and then issue that as an engineering recommendation to NIST. In practice, this is not a very linear process, and it's not a very monolithic process either. For example, one of the first things that came up was this point of time of flight measurement. Steve has been doing a lot of stuff with this. He's been using the, uh, the second tones. We've talked about this in previous meetings here. And one thing that we could do with that might be to add a chirp to the voice band. However, time of flight is not a science question, it's an observation variable. And to connect it to a science question is crucial to being able to really design a viable modulation scheme because the science question will set the, uh, the specification for what needs to be learned. It will set the resolution and so forth. So we have to connect it in both directions, uh, both back to a science question and forward to an implementation. And then another uh, set of ideas that floats around are kind of other tools in our toolkits that might be worth trying. So for instance, Coherent CW, which David will be talking about. Um, these are interesting tools. They're examples of modulations that could be used but they need to be connected backward to a science objective. And this is just generally part of this very large design space that we need to characterize as part of the process of coming up with really a true uh, answer to this question. So uh, this is not a single shot through from left to right. This will be an iterative process. We'll probably try several things at a time. Um, we welcome input and ideas on how this uh, space could be sort of filled in and what might be interesting to tackle with these tools. And we'll be consulting with, uh, with people in this room, outside this room, in the working group, outside the working group, on populating a science traceability matrix that will follow sort of this template um, as we move forward over the, the coming months. For the moment though, we are working on our first initial test. So the characterization signal will be uh, put on the air in the same manner as voice signals. And because the goal for those is to make them something that people are gonna listen to without disrupting other modulation, they go through a fairly extensive amount of filtering. Um, there's typically a, uh, a filter to avoid stepping on the 100 hertz time code, for example, um, and filtering to make sure that the sidebands are not disrupted. So we're putting this in as a standard voice announcement, this known signal, and we'll be using it to characterize the signal chain from the file that we put in to the signal that leaves the antenna and the signal that is picked up uh, at radio stations at various places. Our plan for this is to use a uh, Kiwi SDR recording and possibly there will be a crowdsource campaign in the future to gather some more data about this. This will be an opportunity for us to prototype our receiving setup and to prototype our processing. And hopefully the results of this will give us some ideas for where we wanna go next. So without further ado, here's the, uh, the characterization signal 
and the list of its component parts, it's prefaced by a 10 second voice announcement. What follows is a scientific modulation test. For more information, visit hamsci.org slash WWV. That went through a bit quickly. Uh, further write-ups are available here. I'll be posting the link in the chat. In general, updates for this project are going to be posted at hamsci.org slash WWV. And uh, although at press time, the signals are not on the air yet uh, because the stations are still setting up waveform generators to transmit them, hopefully uh, in the near future, you'll be able to tune in to minute eight or minute 48 and hear some of these test signals. So keep an eye on the uh, the website, keep an eye on the HamSci listserv, watch this space. There should be some interesting things coming up for uh, ways that we can continue our work with NIST and uh, WWV and WWVH. Thanks very much for your time. And if you have any questions uh, on the working group, please send me an email at this address, 73.